Shanghai GDG is a very interesting uh, developer community. I'm glad somebody has asked this question. I mean, this is where the magic happens. This is primarily a question and answer show. So if any of you out there would like to ask questions. Open up one browser and make sure that it worked there. These days, it's not unusual for me to have about five different browser windows open at the same time. A good portion of my front-end development time is spent trying to figure out how I can best build a feature, and a good portion of that is spent finding the right website where I can find out the information I need. Right now, there's a lot of great information that's out there, but it's spread across a bunch of different sites. Oftentimes, the difference between getting that information quickly and right and getting it wrong can be the difference between something taking an hour and all day. As the web moves forward, we have different operating systems, different browsers, different devices, and not just that, the standards that we use for the web keep changing rapidly day in and day out. And it's hard to find the documentation for what works across all of them. This is something we all need to solve together as a community for the web to be the best it can be. The founding members of Web Platform Docs have contributed quite a bit of content to create the foundation for Web Platform Docs. It's a new community-driven site that aims to become a comprehensive source for web developer documentation. But it's also an open community, which means you can contribute by sharing your knowledge and your experience. What we need now is a larger community to get in there and deepen the content with their own expertise. Join in the conversation. Make this website the best. Just go to webplatform.org and sign up. Share your expertise. Make it exactly just what you and I need for building a web page. Join the community and start learning and sharing today. Welcome, Welcome to the, to the Chrome, Chrome channel, channel on the Google, Google Developers Live. Live. Um, um, really, really excited, excited today, today to talk to you about a special, special episode about webplatform.org, or webplatform.docs web as we call it. Uh, today uh, I'm in the I'm studio. studio. Uh, my, my name is Peter Lovelace. I'm, I'm a program, program manager, manager in the, in the Google, Google Chrome team, team. on developer and relations. And recently we've been working on a lot of the the yeah, infrastructure, infrastructure and getting, and getting ready, ready for the, the big, big announcement. announcement. And, and uh, with me in the studio, studio today, today, I have um, um, Alex Komorowski. Hi, Alex. Hi, hi. And, and Scott, Scott Rowe. Hello, Alex, Alex, tell us a little bit about the project. And, and well, first of all, tell us what you do at, at Google and what you've been, been doing for this project. project. Sure, sure, so, so my, I'm a product manager on Chrome's Open Web Platform team. And I've been involved in this project for a few months now. The point of it, I guess, is that the web platform is this amazingly powerful platform. And there's lots of good documentation around, but it's all over the place. It's very hard to find it in one place. And so we thought, well, why don't we just create a site that anyone can edit it and so that you can have one place to go and find all the documentation. And a whole bunch of folks thought this was a great idea. We have uh, a number of other organizations are involved from the beginning, which I think is really exciting. Um, and so we just announced it yesterday. Um, the, very, the first step in a very long journey to make this into the, the comprehensive site for web developer documentation. All right. All right. Now, th I think that's an important thing we need to talk about a little bit more, is that this is what you're finding today is an alpha version. Yes. Uh, it's, it's something that we really, with the different stewards, all of the different browser vendors, um, all of the browser vendors really, um, and other companies like Adobe and Nokia and HP, uh, really wanted to seed some content, put some content out there, and then start developing it, developing it in the open. So not really hiding it and, and, and building something that's fantastic uh, and to release it in 2015 or something like that. Or so, <laughs> Right, right. So um, Scott, uh, what do you do and what have you done for this project? So what do you do at Google? And I'm a technical writer work. and I work on web platform docs um, uh, almost exclusively. <laughs> uh, like uh, the other browser vendors on the project, we do have some full-time people dedicated to curating and uh, ensuring the quality of this documentation. We're looking at this as a, as a very high profile project and we want it to succeed. Yeah, that's actually a really good thing, right? So uh, as opposed to other projects that may have uh, a single writer or a single person behind it, this is really a collaborative I uh, effort. But also, as you point out, we have like all of the stewards have uh, full-time people dedicated to this this great resource. So hopefully, um, they will also be able to guide the community in developing more and more of this content. So uh, how about we take a look at the site and uh, start stepping through it? Let's go for a tour. So 
if you look at the home page, you'll find, uh, of course, the, the video that we opened up with. And of course, you'll find different areas at the top, uh, docs, we have a forum, blog, chat, tutorials, and, and other things. Um, one of the important things about this is that right now, the real focus is on the docs area. So in fact, when you hear about this project, you'll hear it, uh, the abbreviation WPD. WPD, Web Platform Docs, webplatform.org, docs. In fact, if you go there, if you click on docs, you'll end up on the, the, the docs homepage, if you will. And this page really has uh, links to all of the information we have. Scott, do you want to tell us a little bit about what kind of content you might expect on the site? Sure. We, we break our content into three basic areas, concepts, reference, and tutorial. Uh, that's pretty standard across any technical writing uh, effort. And uh, within each of those categories, they are uh, we've, we further break the uh, content down into its component parts. So uh, for the CSS reference documentation, you will see things like CSS properties and selectors. And then eventually, you'll burn down into a property like this, font size. Right. Uh, let's take a look at that a moment. So you have uh, font size here. And as I open that up, I find a lot of different tags uh, apply to this. And we'll come back to those later. But you can find uh, an overview table. You have a, a syntax area, the actual values and described examples, and other information. And one of the most valuable things that I think this project will bring to the table is a compatibility matrix. And again, this is just to reiterate, it's just an alpha version right now. Uh, but the nice thing is, everybody can contribute. Uh, I've, I've gone to many sites in the past, and there are some great resources out there. For example, uh, Can I Use? It's a, it's a fantastic resource. I think all of the web developers that I've talked to are pretty much aware of that, and they use that on a, on sometimes on a daily basis. Um, and of course, any of those resources are fantastic, except you can't edit them. If you find something, I've many times I've um, written the owner of a website saying, hey, actually, this has been changed. Uh, you now sh you should uh, include this browser, or you know, and it's just very hard to do as a single person. So uh, having uh, help from the entire community is really powerful. So you can see here uh, compatibility for desktop and mobile, and uh, as I said, this is a, a work in progress, but uh, it, it, the, the content has been seeded to get started. Uh, we also have tutorials. So the the tutorials area, sort of a, a large uh, grouping of content that tells you not just as a reference topic would about the specific feature, but how you can really use them. And many times it will include multiple topics. Uh, for example, how you build something with using the, the audio element or something using a, a, s a set of features, maybe Canvas and WebSocket to build a, a compelling uh, art, a case study, things like that. So let's take a look at that. For example, the connectivity tab, if I open that here, the connectivity feature here, there's already three tutorials. And uh, as I mentioned, a lot of this content has been seeded from areas like uh, MDN, from MSDN, from HTML5 Rocks, from Opera's great uh, articles on web development. So all of the stewards have contributed their uh, a lot of that content already to be here. Now, um, for example, here the WebSocket tutorial is um, a WebSockets basics tutorial. You can, uh, it has a little description of what the problem might be here and uh, code examples and really allowing you to get started with that. And, and, and really the power of web platform docs, uh, I think I would sum it up with this one thing, which is the edit button. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and clicking on edit uh, opens up this edit page. And this is, I want to drill into that a little bit more. Of course, it's very easy to edit a, a small typo, right? If you see a typo, something very small or something you know should be rewritten, go for it, right? You can literally just go in this page. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. You can really, really just edit the page. Go to the bottom of the page and type in a little bit of information about what you edited. Uh, maybe if it's a if it's just a typo, uh, that could be summarized as a 
a, a minor edit. But if you added a, a new paragraph, you can, you can describe what you've done for the logs later and then save it. And that's done. I mean, your documentation is now live on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. you've seen, as I scroll down this page, just a ton of other information. I want to ask Alex, who has been instrumental in creating some of these templates, uh, to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So you'll notice that on these pages, uh, you might be expecting just one big text box, kind right. of, but actually you see here we've got uh, form fields that are broken out and more structured. And so what we've done is we've created for different article types, so for a CSS property or tutorial, um, any number of different article types, we've created a form that helps organize the information. Now we aren't done yet, some of them need some more help. Um, but you can see here, and this is a great example, where it makes it more clear where to fill in the information. Um, one thing, too, to, to call out as well on this page is uh, we had this notion of flags. Mm -hmm. So we know the content isn't perfect yet. Um, it's in a very early state. We need everyone's help uh, to help massage it, uh, make it more complete com and comprehensive. So we have this notion of flags where you can say, uh, this article doesn't cite, uh, doesn't, is not complete, or this article has errors, or this article needs a new title. You can flag these off. So even if you notice a problem, you don't want to fix it. Mm -hmm. You can go in, hit edit, check off these boxes up here. You can see them. They're called high-level issues and content there. And yep. say, well, this, this article is a stub. Um, and then that will flag it so that if you go look at the page, you'll see that at a red bar at the top uh, mm -hmm. that this article needs those, those changes. And other people can find that content later and say, oh, I'm in the mood to fix stubs. Right. And find a list of stubs and go and fix them and remove that flag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's really that's really powerful because what we wanted to do is for the community to help. It needs to be pretty clear uh, how? what sort of how you can do it. What right? exactly, you do, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we've actually broken that down into uh, three different areas. So five minute tasks. Uh, you would uncheck the compatibility needed. And so we want to make it really easy to, to, to get started. Uh, you really don't need to be super technical to be part of this project. Everyone can help. All you need to do is just sign up at the top. You get an account, and you're, and you're rolling. So it, it's that kind of said, if you want to test code, yeah. There's code there to test too. Right. It's, it's kind of addictive, really. You start off, you're correcting a few typos, you're just doing these right. very tactical things that take a couple of minutes. And then as you get more confident, as you do it more often, you take on bigger and bigger tasks. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to organize it this way. Right. To right. help people really sort of get involved in a way that doesn't require them to sort of jump directly into it. It's right. really scary. Right. Yeah, it reminds me, I was, um, I used to contribute uh, a little bit here and there to MDN, and they had a mm -hmm. great uh, system like that too, where they would uh, provide these doc sprints. And later, I'll tell you a little bit more about some uh, ones that we have coming up as well. Yeah. So these doc sprints, where basically people are online on the IRC channel or actually in a physical location, and really just coming out and and saying, okay, what what do I need to do? Here's a list of tasks, and I just go through it. And like you said, I, I found it. Pretty addictive, and it's yeah, really a great right. community effort, right? Yeah, right. and we already have the chat channel and the mailing right. list as well. There's lots of active discussion in the IRC channel about people like, "Hey, how do I fix this?" And it's a great place to find other people to help you figure out how to fix things. Exactly, right. So on the getting started page, there is in fact uh, some information about how you can get connected. Uh, so there's an IRC channel, uh, a mailing list, all mm -hmm. of that's there. Uh, just take a look at that getting started page. So uh, wanted to go through the Q and A. We have um, on our Google Developers Live page, we have a, a moderator, and we have a couple of questions. So let's take some of those, and some of them will be pretty quick. Um, first question is uh, from Fernando. Uh, will web platform docs hold WebGL information? That's a great question. Um, so WebGL is an example of a cutting edge technology. It's only in some browsers at, at the moment. Um, the idea of web platform docs is to be useful, comprehensive, practical documentation for folks. In fact, we have this notion of these pillars, these sort of foundational principles mm -hmm. of the site, which you can see on the site at uh, WPD colon pillars. Um, and that's part of our goal. And so we want to be inclusive about this kind of stuff. If web developers are going to want to know about these kinds of topics, they should be included. 
um, just clearly flagged to make it clear that you cannot rely on this in every browser. Mm -hmm. um, that this that this is something maybe that's not standardized yet, or it's only in the beginning stages of standardization, or it's only in some browsers. So yes, WebGL we definitely want to have documented on this right. site as one example of many other kinds of technologies. And, and just to add to that, if you're a WebGL expert, um, please help us please build that content. <laughs> yep. um, this is really, I mean, there's. I think the the reaction to this project has been so good because, look, it, it's it's out there. It's free information. Everyone can join in. Yeah. Uh, really, the only criticism you can have is not enough out there. And well, come and help us yeah. <laughs> make it better, yeah. right? So, um, but I think what you mentioned also is is an important thing because if we uh, get these standard the documentation about these standards that are in the early stages out there more then really we can start seeing it earlier, we can have more collaboration mm -hmm. about it, and since it's an, a cross-vendor effort, yep. it's going to be really cool. Yeah, right. I'm really excited. Okay. Another question from uh, Altern. Will web platform docs be available in other languages? Um, well, it, it, the infrastructure is set up so that, yes, it will be possible to translate it. Right. Of course, right now at launch, we I think there's actually a little bit of Spanish content that I noticed in the docs last week. We don't week, have a ton of it, so right. we, we definitely our intention, of course, is to have to have this content be available in many different languages. We're, we've uh, done a we looked at a number of different ways of doing this, um, and we're still working on precisely the, the the final way to do it. But this is definitely very important. I know we've had a number of folks reach out to us and say, "Hey, I really want to translate this into German." It's like, cool. <laughs> uh, keep right. hold that thought for a second, as we as we right. make sure we, we get this in place for you to to produce. But we definitely want to have a thriving translation right. uh, community for this. Yeah, and it really comes back to the point where we said we want to get it out in front of the community, mm -hmm. like as sooner rather than later. Absolutely. And so, if that means we don't have it translated in uh, thirty-two languages be at launch, yet. then <laughs> then we'd rather have it out there and get the community to help us build that. Absolutely. So, um, another question from Serge um, from the blog post: Web Platform Docs is the first and most important piece of WebPlatform.org, and that's a good question about uh, you know are there other plans? Uh, sorry, other parts of the site that will be uh, created later on, and I think do you, you want to speak yeah, to so, that a little so bit? Yeah, so right now the the, fo the focus is definitely docs. I mean, it's primarily documentation. That's where we're starting. Um, but I, I'm so excited by webplatform.org because there's so much more potential. Uh, there's so many other things. You're even seeing a little bit with uh, chat. So the IRC channel. Uh, it already has all these interesting discussions going on about not just the site, but web development in general. And so you can imagine webplatform.org growing over time to include all kinds of other things that are relevant to, to web developers. We don't know exactly what those are th at this point, but I'm excited by the possibility of the community helping us figure out what things are going to be useful right. and then doing that on this site. So webplatform.org is much bigger than just documentation, which is already quite big. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a very, very open-ended sort of promise. I'm really right. excited about right. it. So Scott, maybe you can answer this question. Um, I'll do my best. <laughs> Web platform being a community, how can I help out anything other than contributing content? Well, we uh, certainly have a lot of ways to do that. Uh, you can edit the compatibility mm. tables. That requires some Correct. research, uh, figuring out you know what features are supported in which browsers. Um, there are. Uh, a number of uh, flags you can use on content that don't have anything to do with the uh, with the um, editing tasks. Uh, you know, the flags that say this content may be misplaced or uh, or it may uh, be duplicative or some such flag as that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the way we've shown how the forms are 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 laid out um, with the different types of information to supply, those sort of help you get through that process of, of contributing in ways that may involve editing or may not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of other stuff you can do as well. So uh, as a, just one example, you can look at the recent changes list uh, mm -hmm. on the site and see changes that are obviously spam and help mm -hmm. revert those. You could <laughs> uh, be someone who just hangs around the IRC channel and help answer people's questions and help them get started. There's all kinds of stuff to do uh, that doesn't directly involve editing content. Right. But really helping foster the community to be a part of that. Fantastic, fantastic. Another question uh, from Serge. Uh, good questions from Serge here. Uh, <laughs> will, um, will there be video content on the site? Will it be, uh, sorry, actually that's from Elia. <laughs> uh, will it be 
accepted, endorsed, and promoted on the platforms or video tutorials, for example? Uh, I think the answer is yes. Yeah, but I, I, I believe so as well. So we can't speak on behalf of everybody, the right. whole community, obviously, but I, uh, that sounds great to me. Um, and I think this is the perfect kind of thing to bring up on the mailing list yeah. or on the IRC channel and discuss with the rest of the community. But this is this totally fits in with the, the mission of the site. So yeah, definitely, I would. I would expect to see that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is the planned scope for docs? Are server side technologies like PHP mm -hmm. and Ruby going to be uh, added? So, uh, this question, uh, when I was hanging out in the IRC channel a lot yesterday and today, this question's come up a lot. Um, at the beginning, just to speak, uh, again, I can't speak on behalf of the entire community, and it's up to the, us as a community to solve, to figure out uh, what the answer to this question is. Um, the site, we were focusing at the beginning, especially on um, client side technologies. Mm -hmm. So technologies that are implemented in a browser, say. However, there's all kinds of, of documentation that's relevant to web developers. It's not just based on what's in a browser. Um, and I think over time, as we see what, what is more, most useful for the community, um, that may be the kind of stuff that, that's involved in. At the beginning, you can imagine just a simple page that sort of, uh, a, a page that points you in the direction of other documentation sites. Um, but definitely, this is something that, that people are interested in. It will be hard to do correctly because there's so many different things to include, but I think this is a great example of where the community can help us uh, set the direction for this site long term. Right, right. Perfect, perfect. All right. Um, another question here. Uh, how long <laughs> until the alpha ends and mm. what about beta? I, I, <laughs> we don't have. Oh, my. I, that's a great question. <laughs> I, 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 well, the way I, I would describe it that? is uh, we're, we're using the word alpha to communicate to people that this site is very early, uh, very early. We've seeded mm -hmm. it with a lot of great content. But there is so much longer to go before this site has has become the definitive piece the site for documentation for web developers. Um, so when we l drop that label, when we, it becomes a stable or, or beta, I, I don't think anyone knows at this point. Yeah. It really depends on how much the community can come together to bring the site up to the level of quality that we, what we all want it to be. Yeah. Um, but uh, that is definitely our goal. Our goal mm -hmm. is to get this to be the, the definitive source of web developer documentation. And when we're to that point, when we as a community feel comfortable with that, I can imagine that we we drop that alpha bit from the label. Right. right. Yeah. So to be determined. Um, Jerome in Toronto asked, uh, "What happens to existing documentation on the web with web platform docs? Uh, we now have duplicate and redundant documentation. So uh, how do I, yeah, how do I deal with that?" Another <laughs> well, <laughs> another well that's, that's the current state of affairs. Right. That, uh, <laughs> exactly. There is a lot of duplicative content, and what we hope to do over time is to gradually funnel that into fewer and fewer sources for people to go to so that it isn't quite so hard to find things. And that's the purpose of, of yeah. what right. platform. And, and so we, we can't speak on behalf of, of various other sites. Sure. Our hope is that by fostering this community as, as a central place that people can trust, that everyone can come to and uh, centralize around, that naturally over time, yes, right now there's dupl duplicated content on different sites, but quite frankly, that's been the case for a long time as well. There are many great sites out that, are, that du effectively duplicate content across different sites. Mm -hmm. Our hope is that this web platform box can long term become the comprehensive answer where this is where you go, this is where the content goes as well. Um, in, the, in the short term, of course, we're still, it's very early, there's still lots of other sources of content. Right. Um, right. So. Yeah, and like I said earlier on, it's just like the biggest feature here is that you can edit mm -hmm. this content, Absolutely. whereas uh, it's very easy to come across outdated content. Mm -hmm. I've, I've written a lot of articles myself, and then two years later, somebody will post on a blog like, oh, this is so bad, this information. I'm thinking, sure, but it hasn't <laughs> it been updated. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was accurate right. at the time, right, right. especially with these evolving technologies. Absolutely. That's a real problem. This stuff happens so fast that it's almost impossible to keep up with as a Absolutely. single person or a single site. Right, Absolutely. right. It's going to take right. a village. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> the web village. <laughs> right. OK, so uh, one other question here from Morgan. Uh, how should compatibility tables be formatted? Should they list all versions or the first version where you can use an element or attribute? This is a very low-level question, but one yeah. that's sort of near and dear to my heart because I, I wrote the original template that we're using right now for the compatibility tables. Um, so compatibility is a very interesting question because it's, there's lots of different ways to present the information that are useful to people in different contexts. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that we have the answer right now. I think that we've got a, a pretty good stab at the beginning. Um, but this is the kind of thing that we really want to dive into with the community and help figure out what, what is the right way to, to represent this content. So right now, um, what you do is you, you create a new row for each new piece, sub piece of, of support. So the first row is basic support. Um, you might have, say, box shadow. Uh, whether or not you support the inset keyword 
is a sort of sub-feature of that thing, so that would mm -hmm. have its own row. Right. And then you, you uh, ideally we would have the first version number of each browser that started supporting it. Mm -hmm. Now one other thing too that's important is uh, we have this notion of compatibility notes, and so that's a, that's a table after the compatibility table that says, hey, just FYI, uh, in Chrome version 12, there was this weird little hack, you know, tweak that didn't work exactly correctly. Um, uh, so that you still have this historical record for people who do need to mm -hmm. figure out how precisely it differed in other places. Um, but I'm really looking forward to, to working with folks to figure out what the right format is for this. There's a lot of different yeah. formats out yeah. there um, for this kind of information. You so. can also, you can tag content, uh, that is, um, you can set up the compatibility table to show that, you know, when a uh, feature was uh, supported as prefixed and when it was mm, supported yes. without prefix. That's right. That's right. So uh, the, the, the question is, well, from which version onward and how do I show that in the compatibility table? The method we've been adopting is the first version of its support is the first version that you, you, you cite and thereafter it's assumed to be s uh, supported. If, however, a subsequent version is a non-prefixed version, then you have an, a, a, a different tag to apply there. Yep. Uh, so maybe we need a tutorial about using that. <laughs> there are. I mean, th th at this point, it's it's easy for it's easy to test and see. Hey, is, does this browser support this uh, this right. functionality? But you might not know when it started. Back is it's mm -hmm. back in the mists of time. True. Um, and so what we've done in the, in the current template is it's possible to just say I know it's supported. I don't know when it started. Mm -hmm. And then if you want, you can also fill in more specific information right. and say, Oh, I know it was ver supported as a version seven. Right. But there's a lot. There's a lot of room to, to grow here and, and and to explore different options here. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. So I think that gives a pretty good overview. We answered all the questions. We'll we'll come back and we'll make another pass through just in case we missed any. <laughs> uh, the final thing that I wanted to tell, talk a little bit about is the the way you can uh, get started in in the community. Mm -hmm. So of course we we have our the homepage. There's some links to the getting started document. Uh, we're also planning a bunch of uh, doc sprints. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one actually. Um, Shameless plug for the San Francisco <laughs> HTML5 <laughs> user group that I run. Uh, we actually have an event uh, next week that will be live streamed uh, from San Francisco, talking about web standards and also on how to help on this project. And after that, uh, we're announcing for November third, uh, in uh, with with Adobe, we're launching the first Doc Sprint. This is an on-site Doc Sprint, but of course we'll open it up to anyone that wants to join. Uh, yep online. So it's going to be pretty exciting. We're just going to get in the room for a, a day and, and start going through issues. And like we said, we have five minute tasks, half hour tasks, and then the, the slightly longer ones. Yeah. Hopefully get a bunch of those out of the way. Yeah. And yeah, so anything you there, want there, to There's a list that? of those on the site as well. That's and right. That's but right. one thing I want to emphasize too is there are people who are organizing these events, like Adobe and, and, and Peter and others. Um, but really, we want to encourage you guys to create your own as well. You don't have to wait for one of the right. stewards <laughs> or something to do this. This is something where if you want to just grab a few people in, in your hometown or whatever and, and work on it together, that's great. Um, you know, let us know on the IRC channel so we can make sure we're around to support you guys. But this is all about uh, we want you guys, to have, uh, everyone in the community, to feel the ability to sort of get this stuff started. So. Right, right. Yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's a very good point. Of course, we're going to share our um, sort of the, the, the pros and cons or everything we've done and the things that went well and the mm -hmm. things that didn't go well. But yeah, everyone should be able to. Start. I mean, there, we shouldn't have to wait until the 3rd of November to right. start helping. Absolutely <laughs> not. <Yeah. laughs> Definitely. Great. Well, with that, I think we're going to close it for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, this the recording of this session will be available at the same URL in a few minutes, so you can point people to that. And um, hopefully, we'll see you online in the IRC channel helping out on web platform docs. Thanks so much.